بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to this week's episode of Purification of the Heart In this week's episode we're going to talk about part of a hadith of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it's the famous hadith in Bukhari and others where he mentions the seven that will be in the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment when there's no shade except for his subhanahu wa ta'ala and the one we're going to talk about of the seven is the rajal alladhi qalbuhu mu'allaq bil masajid the one whose heart is attached to the masajid his heart is attached to the masjids. And we're going to explain, inshallah, in this episode, this part of the hadith, because when our heart becomes attached to the masajid, this means it's attached to the place where we offer the greatest act of worship in Islam, which is our salat. So our hearts become attached to the salat and to the place where we pray our salat. And this is one of the best ways through the masjid and through the salat to purify our hearts, inshallah, tabarakah wa ta'ala. If you look at the issue of the masajid in Islam, the masjids in Islam and the importance. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that inna ahab al-bilad ila Allah masajiduha wa abghad al-bilad ila Allah aswaquha that the most beloved of places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the masajid. And the most disliked places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the marketplaces. And this is because the masajid are the places where his name is remembered subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where we offer the ibadat, the different types of ibadat from salat and reading the Quran, attending Islamic lectures and all of the beautiful things we do in the masjid. And if you live in the west where the masjid, it serves the purpose of the masjid like it did in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the masjid is the community center, it's where the Muslim community comes together. It's where they do everything that has to do with the Muslim community right there at the masjid. Unfortunately, in the Islamic lands today, the masajid, they've become not like it was at the time of the Prophet Wasallam. It's become something where you go, Allahu Akbar, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah, get out, get out. If you want to stay, they might come and say, we want to lock the door, it's time to go. So that's not how it was at the time of the Prophet Wasallam. It was a community center. It was a place where the Muslims came together. They talked about their problems, they worked out their problems, they would joke with one another and have, and have fun, and, and they would focus on their worship as well. They would do everything right there from the masjid. It was the center of everything during the time of the Prophet ﷺ and during the time of his companions as well. But unfortunately, that has been lost in a lot of the Muslim world today. We ask Allah to help the Muslims in bringing the life back to the masjid like it was during those days. And also because of the importance of the masjid in Islam, our beloved Prophet ﷺ, Encourage the Muslims to build the masajid. He said, "Man bana lillahi masjida, bana Allahu lahu baytan fil jannah." That whoever builds for Allah a masjid, I mean a masjid here on the earth, that Allah subhanahu wa taala will build for him a house in the paradise in the jannah. And what a great reward! And it came in another hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned, "Sabr al ladi yajli al abd ajrohunna wa huwa fi qabrihi baad mautihi." That seven things that will, seven things that will continue for the servant after his death, the reward will continue, he will continue to get the reward when he has died and he is in his grave. And he mentioned from these seven that, uh, man bana lillahi masjida, that whoever built for Allah a masjid. And because of the importance of the masajid in Islam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, encourage the Muslims only to pray in the masjid. And you get more reward when you pray in the masjid. As it came, that Salat al-Fadh, that the person who prays by himself, the person who prays with the Jama'ah, it's more in reward of Sabu Ushreen al-Daraja, and another one, Khamsa Ushreen al-Daraja, another narration, either 27 or 25 degrees more in reward for the person who prays in the Jama'ah with the Muslims. And if you look at the other hadith, the Prophet also warned about the people who pray in their house without an excuse and they do not pray in the masjid. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ سَمِعَ النِّدَاءَ فَلَمْ يَأْتِهِ فَلَا صَلَاةَ لَهُ إِلَّا مِنْ عُذْرِ That whoever hears the nida, he hears the call for the prayer, and he does not answer, 
that he has no prayer unless he has an excuse. I mean, his prayer will not be accepted except for if he has an excuse. Some of the scholars, they took from this hadith and they said, you have to pray in the masjid, it's wajib. Others said this is just something to encourage you more and to put emphasis that it's sunnah mu'akata to pray in the masjid. And I don't want to go in now, we're not in a fiqh class here. We're talking about ways to purify our hearts. But I will say that a lot of the scholars of Islam, especially the, the, the Hanbali madhab, and also the Zahri madhab, that they, and the scholars of hadith as well, of Ahl hadith that they all say that it's wajib for the Muslim who has who hears the call to prayer for him to pray in the masjid. And it's enough for a Muslim who wants to benefit from his religion and not fall into and sins or fall into shortcomings to know that we have scholars in Islam who have said it's wajib, so he should strive always to pray his five daily prayers in the masjid. And, if, and we're talking about now, we're giving the characteristics of the person whose heart is attached to the masjid. And the first characteristic is that he is from the person who strives to pray in the jama'ah, to pray in the masjid with the Muslims. And yet another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he was concerned, he wanted to actually, he said, I have the hum, he has the concern to what? To burn down the houses of the people who pray in their house without an udhu, without an excuse. And obviously, this is something, you know, that as the scholar said, the Prophet ﷺ wouldn't do that. You have women, children, you have elder people who cannot make it. Now, they don't have to come to the masjid anyways. So the Prophet ﷺ, he wouldn't have done something like this. But for him to even have a concern or to think like this, he's showing the ummah how dangerous it is for the Muslim man to pray in his house without an excuse. And that he must come to the masjid. And that came in the hadith of uh, the Al-A'ma. And it came in the hadith of Al-A'ma, the blind man, from the companions when he came to uh, the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, لا أجد قائد يقودني إلى المسجد. He said, I do not find somebody who will take me to the masjid. He's a blind man. And he told him that the path to the masjid, it was a very difficult one, and there was things that could harm him, and he cannot see, so it's very difficult for him to get to the masjid. So the Prophet ﷺ said, okay, he gave him the permission to pray in his house. And then when he turned around and was leaving the Prophet ﷺ, he said, he asked him, telling him to hold on, هَلْ تَسْمَعْنِي دَا Do you hear the call for prayer? He said, yes. He said, فَأَجِبْ They said, you should what? You should answer this nida, answer the call for prayer, and you pray in the masjid. And if we look at how the salaf, the scholars of Islam were before us, we'll see that they used to do that. They used to focus on praying the prayer in the jama'at. And the Prophet ﷺ, he focused on certain prayers by giving them a lot of ajr in the jama'at. For example, in the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ صَلَّ الْعِشَاءَ فِي جَمَاعَةٍ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَامَ نِصْفْ لَيْلَةٍ That whoever prays Salat al isha in the jama'at, with a group in the masjid, it is as if he has prayed a half of a night in prayer of Qiyam al-Layl. And then he said, وَمَنْ صَلَّ الصُّبْحَ فِي الْجَمَاعَةِ فَكَأَنَّمَا صَلَّ اللَّيْلَ كُلَّهَا That whoever, then after he prayed Isha and Jama'at, then he prays Fajr and Jama'at as well, it's as if he has prayed the entire night, he's been standing the entire night in prayer. And this is why the Salaf before us, they used to focus and strive to pray only in the Jama'at. If you look at the Athar, the statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, when he said that, وَلَقَدْ رَأَيْتَنَا وَمَا يَتَخَلِّفْ عَنْهَا إِلَّا مُنَافِقْ مَعْلُومَ نفاق. That you would see us in our times. That nobody would leave the jama'ah, nobody يَتَخَلِّفْ عَنْهَا He would not, for no reason, leave the jama'ah, pray in the jama'ah, except for somebody who was a munafiq, a hypocrite, مَعْلُومَ نفاق. He was a well-known hypocrite, a well-known munafiq. This is the only person who would leave the salah in the jama'ah. And he said, وَلَقَدْ كَانَ الرَّجَلْ يُؤْتَى بِهِ يَتَهَادَى That he would be between two people. But they would take him between his... That if he wanted to go to the jama'ah, they would take him and put him between two of his brothers. He would walk. He would be sick. He was not able to go but because he didn't want to miss the jama'ah. Because he knew the importance of the jama'ah in the salat and praying in the masjid. He would walk having one hand on the, sh- on the shoulder of one of his brothers and the other hand on the other shoulder of his other brother until they would place him in the line and he would pray with the jama'ah. And if you look at those who came after the sahaba, how they strive to pray in the jama'ah. Sa'id ibn Musayyib, from the great tabi'een, radiyallahu anhu, and rahimahullah, that it was said, as it was said by al awzai that there was something special that Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib, that there was something special that Sa'id ibn Musayyib had that no other of the tabi'een had. And he said that that's he prayed 40 years straight in the jama'ah, and he never even missed takbiratul ihram. 
He never missed the, the, the jama'ah. He never missed praying in the jama'ah and never missed takbir al ihram He said four of these, that he never missed the jama'ah, and he said 20 of these 40, they, he did not see the shoulders of men, meaning that he was always on the front row. And he was learning as a young man. He prayed 40 years, never missed the jama'ah. Perhaps he was in the second row, third row, in the first 20 years sometimes, sometimes in the first row. But the next 20 years in his life, he never even missed the first row, the Saf al-Awwal. He was always there because he was always striving to hear or to be in the jama'ah. And that's why he said, Rahimahullah, Sa'id al Musayyib, that the time never came, the time for the faridah, for the third prayer, it never came in, except for I was already preparing for it. And he said, when it came closer to prayer, he said, I'm longing for it, and I'm mushtaq, that he's actually missing this prayer. And also it's been confirmed that uh, Adi ibn Hatim, uh, عنه, he also said this, that he said that, that when the time for prayer would come, I would actually be mushtaq, I would actually be missing the prayer. And it came that the Sahabi, Al-Harith ibn Hassan, radiallahu an, when he got married, they saw him the next day praying Salat al-Fajr in Jama'ah. And he said, they said, you know, you just got married last night and now you're praying Fajr in Jama'ah. And he said, Wallahi, he swore by Allah, إِنِّ امْرَأَةً تَمْنَعُونِي مِنَ دَاءَ صَلَاةَ الْغَدَاءَ فِي الْجَمَاءَ لَا إِمْرَأَةَ السُّوءٍ That any woman who forbids me from praying the Salat of Ghada, I know the name for Salat al-Fajr, in Jama'ah with the Muslims, she is La إِمْرَأَةَ السُّوءٍ He made the ta'kid with the lamb, that verily she is an evil woman. So he said, Alhamdulillah, that his bride from the Sahabiyat, from the pious women, she would not forbid him to say, where are you going? You just got married, you, you better stay here. She wasn't like that. She encouraged him to go to the Jama'ah because she wanted the Jannah. And that's what brought the two Sahabi together. And we'll continue, inshallah, to talk about the signs and what are the characteristics of the person whose heart is attached to the masjid. We were talking before the break about the characteristics of the person whose heart is attached to the masjid. And from these these characteristics is that he is from the person who goes early to the prayer. Most Muslims today, you'll find Muslims who live close to the masjid, they will wait until they hear the iqamah. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. And then they, okay, let's get up, let's go. He might have, have wudu, he might not. He comes on the, on the third rakah, the fourth rakah, he might not even catch until the, the very end of the salat, and then he goes. But the true believer, the person who is striving to have his heart attached to the masjid and get this great reward of being in the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, that he is from the person who goes early to the prayer. And from the great reward of this is that the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith that when we are there for praying and there's nothing holding us except for the salat, you're not waiting for your friend, you don't have an appointment, so you might as well just sit in the masjid and wait till he comes. You're solely waiting for the prayer. It will be written for you as if you were praying, even if you're just sitting there. You come into the masjid, and in the example of this, you come into the masjid, for example, now, and you come in 30 minutes before the adhan, or right when the adhan is called, and you say Allahu Akbar, you make tahiyyat al-masjid, two rakats. You have 20 minutes till the iqama. All of these 20 minutes, even if you're just sitting there in the masjid, waiting for the iqama, but you're waiting for the salat, then you will get the ajr, the reward of being as if you were praying this whole time, subhanAllah. And also you'll get the reward as it came in the same hadith that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the angels will be praying for you while you're sitting there. They will be saying, Allahumma ghfir lahu, Allahumma rahamhu, Allahumma tub alayhi, subhanahu the malaika. The angels will be making dua for you. They'll be praying for you. They will say, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you of your sins, to have mercy upon you, to repent upon you. These are the malaika, the, the angels that will be making dua for you when you are sitting in the masjid. The next thing that shows that the person's heart is attached to the masjid is he is from the people who strives to always make the takbirah of ihram. The first takbir of a salat, he never tries to mission it. Because it's a serious thing. And the salaf used to look at this as being a very, very serious thing. And they said, if you see the man, يتهاون في التكبير الأولى فاقصل يديك منه. If you see somebody who doesn't really care, he's absent-minded when it comes to takbirah. He doesn't care if he catches the first takbirah, if he misses the first rakah, the second rakah. As long as he gets there, he doesn't care. They said, wash your hands from him and just give up on him because he's hopeless. So this is a serious thing the salaf used to look at. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a beautiful hadith that all of us should try to implement in our lives, he said, مَنْ صَلَّ لِلَّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا فِي جَمَعًا That whoever prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 40 days, 40 straight days in the jama'ah, 
he prays with the group in the masjid. كُتِبَتْ لَهُ بَرَاءَةً بَرَاءَةٌ مِنَ النَّارِ وَبَرَاءَةٌ مِنَ النفاق. That there are two things that he is freed from during this time. If he prays all 40 times, he doesn't miss the, miss the takbirah. And because it came in the hadith, يُدْرِكْ فِيهَا تَكْبِيرَةُ الْإِحْرَامِ After he said you pray 40 days consistently in the jama'ah, يُدْرِكْ فِيهَا تَكْبِيرَةُ الْإِحْرَامِ كُتِبَتْ لَهُ بَرَاءَةً بَرَاءَةٌ مِنَ النَّارِ وَبَرَاءَةٌ مِنَ النفاق. That there are two things that he is freed from if he makes the first takbirah during these 40 days, is the first one he will be free from the hellfire. May Allah free us and all the Muslims and all of mankind from the hellfire. And that he will be free from nifaq, from being a hypocrite. Also may Allah protect us from that as well. As the scholars of Islam has mentioned, as the scholars of Islam have mentioned, that the people who try to implement and act upon this hadith in their lives, they found the barakah, the blessings in this hadith, in all aspects of their lives, not just the religious aspects, even the other worldly aspects in their lives, they found the benefit from trying to implement this hadith and not missing one takbirah in the jama'ah, in the masjid, with praying with the Muslims for 40 straight days. And I want to call all of us after this episode to strive to try to do this, inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala. And if we were to look at the salaf and how they were when it came to the takbirah of ihram, the first takbirah in the salat and not missing it, you will see, for example, Amish as Wakir from the great scholars of Islam as well, Rahimahumullah, as, they, as he mentioned about Al Amish, Rahimahullah, he said that Al Amish, he said he was almost 70 years old and he had never missed the first takbirah. He always, throughout his life, always made the first takbirah and never missed it during this time. And also, the Salaf, our pious predecessors, they were so keen about getting to this first takbirah that they said if they missed the first takbirah, that they would give each other ta'ziyah, condolences like we do when somebody dies. They will give each other condolences for three days because they missed the takbirah. And if they missed the jama'ah altogether, they didn't pray in the masjid, they will give each other condolences for seven days. And if they missed the jumu'ah, which a lot of us might do, we're busy, we'll miss it this week, it's not a big deal, as long as we don't miss three in a row. Uh, so he'll miss the jumu'ah, and the salaf, if they missed the jumu'ah, they will make condolences, ta'ziyah for 70 days. This is very serious. The salat was very serious in their life. And this is how we, if we want to be successful in purifying our hearts and successful in getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having Allah pleased with us and being successful in the hereafter, also we need to be serious and focus on our salat just like our salaf, just like our pious predecessors, rahimahumullah, as they did as well. Also from the signs that somebody's heart is attached to the masjid and the characteristics of the man whose heart is attached to the masjid is that he goes to the masjid even in the most difficult of situations. And we mentioned before that the Sahaba used to take one of their sick brothers and they would carry him between them. He would put his hand on each shoulder of two of his brothers until they stood him up in the line so he could pray in the jama'ah. Also, Abu Abdurrahman al-Sulami, rahimahullah, they say he would make people carry him to the masjid when he was sick because he didn't want to miss the prayer. And it was said to Sa'id ibn Musayyib, uh, rahimahullah, that Tariq, one of the rulers in his time, that he wanted to kill him. He wanted to execute him. So he said, why don't you take this time and, you know, and, and pray in the masjid, in, the, in your house and don't come to the masjid so you don't get killed. And he said to him, he looked at the person saying this to him, and he said, Asma hayal al-falah. I hear hayal al-falah. Come to the success. And I don't answer. Subhanallah. Now, if we were told that one of the rulers wanted to kill us, he said, don't pray in, or stay at home. He said, I'll go to another city. I'll go to another country. We would run, and we wouldn't be willing to do that. But he said, even if I'm going to get killed, I'm going to answer the nida, the call to the prayer, and I don't care, because he was very serious about his salat. And we talk about going in difficult situations to the masjid, even in the most difficult of situations to the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, بَشَّرِ الْمَشَّائِينَ فِي الظُّلُمْ إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدْ بِالنُّورِ التَّامِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ He said, alayhi salatu wa salam, بَشَّرِ الْمَشَّائِينَ فِي الظُّلُمْ إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدْ that to give glad tidings to those who walk to the masajid in the dhulm at the time of very darkness, when it's very dark at times, with the complete nur, the complete light, yawm al qiyamah. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Look at this ajah for those who go to the masajid in the difficult times, like when it's cold in the morning and you don't want to go during the winter time. Or in some countries where the country's not advanced, 
and you might fall into a hole, you might fall this and that. And you have these problems, even where I live now, we have these problems because the, all the roads are not paved. So you'll see now when you walk, you might even twist an ankle sometimes, and you fall on a rock. But these are you'll get this great edge of the Nuratam, the complete light on the Day of Judgment, when you strive to pray in the masjid. Also, if the person's heart who's attached to the masjid, he's from the person who waits for the salat after another salat. And for example, someone who prays Maghrib and he stays there just until Isha so he can get the reward for Salatul Isha. And it came in the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, أَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى مَا يَمْحُ اللَّهُ بِهِ الْخَطَايَا وَيَرْفَعْ بِهِ الدَّرَجَاتِ Should I not guide you? And the person guiding you is the Prophet ﷺ. He said, should I not guide you to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he erases the mistakes. And he erases the mistakes and he raises the reward or the degrees in the reward. And he said, Isbaq al wudu al makari. To make wudu, the perfect wudu, Isbaq al wudu. To make the perfect wudu al al makari in difficult times. For example, when you get up in the morning on Salat al Fajr in the winter, it's very cold. You want to make a very brief wudu, just you know, the Isbaq, the, the complete wudu, the best type of wudu in these difficult situations. And Kathrat al Khuta al Masajid, and taking a lot of steps to the masajid and wa intidar as salat ba'd as salat waiting for the prayer after another prayer until another prayer comes fa dhalikum ar ribat fa dhalikum ar ribat he said it three times alayhi salatu was salam and also the person whose heart is attached to the masajid he focuses on making the dhikr after the salat subhanallah al azim the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that whoever says subhanallah 33 times alhamdulillah 33 times allahu akbar 33 times, and then he finishes it on the 100 by saying, La ilaha illallah, wahduhu la sharika la, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu, huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. At the 100th time, that all of his sins will be forgiven, even if it was like Zabud al-Bahr, like the foam of the Bahr. And he said that whoever reads Ayatul Kursi after the Salat with the Jama'ah, that nothing will stop him from entering the paradise except for death. Meaning that the only thing between him and entering the Jannah is when he will die if he always says, I always reads Ayatul Qursi after the Salah. Also the person whose heart is attached to the Masjid is from the person who is always there when there's a, a dars, a lesson or a lecture or a reminder in the Masjid. He stays there to benefit and to purify his heart from this and to learn more about his religion. And last but not least, the person whose heart is attached to the Masjid is the person also who doesn't go and pray while his kids are running around in the street and he doesn't know where they are. He also focuses on making sure his kids learn to have their hearts attached to the masajid. And until next week's episode, Allahu Alam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.